Hey guys, and welcome back to another lesson. We're going to do an interesting Chords Corner uh, episode today. We haven't done one in a while, and I'm kind of feeling up to it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a particular chord, and then show you in context how it works, and sort of break it down, I'll show you how to play it, and when to play it, more importantly. And I have a particularly interesting chord for you today, which also has a lot of symmetry, which is kind of very interesting. I'm going to start... We are playing a little chord progression for the melody that you probably know, and then after which I'm going to sort of break down what I played. Okay, so let's take a couple of steps back and break down the thing I played. Uh, but before that, I'm going to show you the chord, which is the particular chord I'd like to focus on today. And this is a ninth chord, which has both a flattened and a sharpened 5. For example, here's this uh, chord, which is now I'm, playing just, now I'm playing a G chord, which is a G9 with a sharpened and a flattened 5. And the way you think about this could be that here's your G9 chord, here's a 5, so you can flatten it, or actually sharpen it, and here's a 5 as well, D, and you can flatten it, and you end up with this particular chord. Now, the way I actually prefer to think about this is uh, as two augmented chords superimposed on one another. <clears throat> In this particular case, look at the left hand. It's actually playing a G augmented chord, so I have a G, a B, and a, a D sharp. And in the right hand, I'm playing an F augmented chord. So I'm playing in the right hand a, an augmented chord, which is two semitones below the augmented chord in the left hand. And put together, I get my G9 flattened 5, sharpened 5. And of course, you can transpose it to, to of course, all 12 uh, notes. Now let's go back and take a look at the chord progression I played and I'll show you kind of where to use this particular chord and voicing. Uh, so here it makes its first appearance and this is a, an F sharp 9, flattened 5, sharpened 5. Uh, and after which the chord progression goes into an F, F major. So really we have kind of a chromatic motion where this F sharp uh, augmented chord, I call it, let's call it a double augmented chord. I think it kind of makes sense because you're playing two augmented chords, one in each hand. So this double augmented chord goes into the F major, which is a semitone below it. And this is really, I think, the main use I personally would envision for this. This is kind of a chromatic motion chord, which leads naturally to the uh, major, sometimes minor chord, which is a semitone below it. You can also think about this a little bit more, bit more theoretically as, the, as the, the F sharp could be a triton substitution for a C, or a C dominant, which is the secondary dominant of F major. Now if you didn't really follow this particular po point, don't worry about it too much. You can still stick with the chromatic interpretation. Let's keep on going with this piece and you'll see where it features uh, a couple of more, uh, more times. So you see I'm playing, this is kind of an E diminished chord, and here I have my double augmented chord, which is, let's call it, a, this is an E flat double augmented, which, as before, leads to a chord, a semitone below it. So again, chromatic motion, this time, into a minor chord. And again, this double augmented chord, a B flat, double augmented, going into an A minor. Now, 
Now, this is not the only use you can uh, extract out of this particular chord. Uh, you know, you can maybe go for uh, sometimes in some situations, especially with the second, if you want to sort of create tension before going into the minor second chord. So let's say in the key of C major, the minor second would be a D minor. You can proceed it with a D double augmented. And you can think about this in a couple of different ways, but before I go back to the way, before I, I kind of talk about the way you can think about this, uh, I want to point out something very interesting about this double augmented chord, and that is its inherent symmetry. Let's take this, let's say, uh, F sharp double augmented. Let's take it down one semitone. And now let's take it down another semitone. Now, really, if you look at this particular chord, this particular voicing, it has the exact same notes as the original chord. They're just arranged differently, right? I have a, in, in the original chord, I had an F sharp, B, um, F sharp, let's say B flat, D, and then E, uh, G sharp, and C. And going down to semitone, I have the exact same note, an F sharp, a B flat, a G sharp, a C, and an E. And if I do this again, I get the exact same set of notes. You know, I can keep doing this, and the, you know, again, exact same set of notes. So the chords built on, let's say, C, the double augmented chord built on C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp or B flat, whatever. All of these have the exact same notes, or they're really the same. And all of the double augmented chords built on these notes are again exactly the same because all of these notes are one or two semitones apart. So really you only have two double augmented chords. That's all there is to it. And I'm not saying that there is a lot to do with this particular piece of information, but I think it's just really interesting. It has to do with the fact that, you know, this is a, a whole tone scale and augmented chords are built on whole tone scales. And these whole tone scales have a lot of symmetry to them. So they're, they're kind of very interesting. You know, they sound like a dream. <clears throat> now, I'm going to conclude by going back to the this idea that I told you where you can take the second degree, let's say a D double augmented, and have it lead into a D minor. And the reason you can do this is because really a D double augmented is the same as an F sharp double augmented, which leads into an F, but a D minor and an F are really very, very closely related. You know, the D minor is kind of the parallel minor of the, of the F major. So it's kind of a chord substitution. Again, if you didn't exactly follow this particular convoluted logic, don't worry about it too much. You know, it's it's not super useful. Just a, just an interesting little tidbit that might help you look at this uh, or understand the thing that you're playing a little bit better. I think that's it. I hope you've learned like a cool new chord to use and incorporate into your playing, uh, that you've learned something interesting. And as usual, I'll see you next time.